Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with our terrain, we're going to be adding a little bit more detail to it and we are going to be making it look awesome. So for those of you that aren't up to date with the series, in the last video basically what we did was we created this awesome environment that we've got here. Um, it's very simple as of now, we've got a basic little terrain here and we've got some uh, colours on it and we've also got some textures on it as well. So if you were to go down to the floor and look at the grass you can see it looks sort of grassy um, you know if we look at the rock it's got a rock texture on there and our gravel is also very gravelly I guess um, but either way it looks awesome but what I want to do today is pretty much take that one step further and show you how to make it look a little bit better having said that we're going to be detailing our terrain we're going to be adjusting our material um, to get rid of the shininess that it's got at the moment we're also going to be introducing our normal maps to it to add a little bit of depth a little bit more detail and we're also going to be changing the size of the textures on there because at the moment it just tiles way too much and it's just not realistic. And also if I get time I'm probably also going to be going over some more like advanced detailing um, sculpting techniques basically. So we'll just basically turn these big old rocks into a more realistic big old rock. So you know we'll go over like proper erosion and like the little landslides and that kind of stuff and you know how to paint it properly if we get time. If not it'll probably be in the next video. But without further ado let's get into this, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adjusting my material here just to get rid of, of the you know the big shininess that we've got in our terrain. It's really simple to do and um, because it's part of the material I'm simply just going to open up the first terrain underscore mat it's for me it's going to be in third person bp or you know wherever you put it really so i'm going to go ahead and open that up and in terms of um you know getting rid of shininess and shininess and that kind of stuff it's all going to be controlled with the specular value so the specular value is essentially just going to allow you to control how much light will bounce off of the material so if i turn that down to zero no light will bounce off of it and it'll be completely you know rough it won't look too uh, you know it'll be it'll look natural for a terrain because the ground isn't naturally shiny um whereas if it was to put it up uh, you know something like a value of something like one it would be all shiny and bright uh, and everything so let me just go ahead and give you an example of how that looks also if you haven't actually checked out my unreal engine 4 beginner tutorial series i do have dedicated videos for things like the diffuse the specular the normal the emissive and that kind of stuff so you can see at the moment it hasn't really changed anything when I change the specular value to 1. If I was to change it down to 0 you will see the big difference there um, and hopefully it should help you understand exactly what it does. So just give it a second to load up and you'll see exactly what's going down any second now. And you can see, you know, it's got rid of the shininess and that is exactly what we want. So the way I did that is I just right clicked in my little graph here and I added a constant. And a constant just allows us to add in some kind of like constant value, I guess. Um, so if I add that constant, I don't want constant free vector or anything like that. I just want a value that goes from 0 to 1 and that's all I'm doing. So just a normal constant hook it up into specular and then just change the value in the left hand side in your little details panel here and that will allow you to just you know adjust it a little bit so we're going to set this to zero i'm going to press apply and i'm also going to make sure that i save that as well and in a moment we'll also have a look exactly how that you know we'll look at it in the terrain to see exactly what's changed and you're going to see a big difference it's going to be a little bit more realistic now we have also got a couple more changes that we need to make to our material to make it realistic we're going to be using our normal map to basically make a little bit more depth a little bit more detail to the you know material so if you look in the background here it's all white that is not uh, not all white sorry it's all checkered that's not how it's supposed to look if you just give it a moment to finish building the shaders it will you know go back to the way it should so just give that a moment um, in the meantime what I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain normal maps to you a little bit you know just in a rough bit of detail just so those of you that haven't seen my other series they can follow along um, so basically we've got a little node here for a normal map and that's basically just gonna allow us to create some fake depth in the material it just basically adds a little bit of offset and you know just gives it that that depth depth really and it looks really nice um so i'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how to do that also if you look at my viewport now you can see that we're you know it's got rid of the shininess everywhere and that is definitely more realistic 
So if I was to press play and run around in here, it's not shining bright in my face, it's not, you know, irritating me, and it looks quite nice. So, in terms of normal maps, let me go ahead and show you what they look like. So I'm going to go into my starter content, and I'm going to go into textures, and I'm just going to type in grass. And once I've done that, it'll come up with my diffuse for the grass and also come up with a normal. And that's just basically, this little normal map is basically going to tell the engine how much displacement there should be, you know, how much depth to add and that kind of stuff. So with that, I'm basically going to introduce it into, you know, my terrain material. So we need to do exactly the same thing for normal as we did for diffuse. So we need to copy and paste the layer blend node hook it up into normal, and then we need to grab the normal map from the content browser for that particular texture, making sure it's the right one, and we just set it up in the exact same way. So I'm just going to select it in the content browser, I'm going to press T while we're in the graph and it'll add it in, or you can just drag it in, you know, do it, do it whichever way you want. So I'm just going to quickly hook this up, layer grass into here, and once again I'm going to set, you know, the height to the alpha on there and because I want the sizing to all be exactly the same I'm gonna make sure that I hook up landscape coordinates um, you know up to the UVs as well so if you have a look in the preview here now you can see it's got a little bit more depth to it you know got that nice fake depth and when I start to do that to the mud and the rock especially the rock you know you'll see a really nice different uh, you know nice difference so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the normal for the rock as well and if I remember that was called rock underscore basalt so I'm gonna select it in the content browser I'm gonna press T to add it in just to get the texture sample gonna hook up layer rock to there just like that once again I'm gonna hook up the UVs and I also need to add in the gravel as well so I'm gonna type that in so gravel and there we go Oh, so we've got too many there, so we're just going to hook this up. There we are, layer mud, layer mud. Simple. So if we go ahead and press apply in a moment, we should hopefully see that come through. So I'm going to press apply. And while it's applying that to the scene, while it's compiling the shaders, I'm going to just try and tidy this up a little bit, just so we can easily follow along. So I'm going to move this down, move this down, and move this down. <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure I save this again because I don't want to be losing anything here. Um, you know, it's really important that you keep on saving your stuff. Um, especially when you're having the same issues that I'm having, where my computer keeps overheating while I'm doing stuff, turns it off halfway, and boom, I lose all the content on my computer. But anyway, let's just drop that for a moment. And just give it a second to finish saving. So... I guess while it's saving now is probably a good time to go and check out my social media pages and stuff like that maybe. I don't know, it's entirely up to you. So it's compiling the shaders again. I can't see the exact number because I've got a pop filter in my face. Um, but if I was to go and look at the ground now, you can see we've got a little bit more detail to it. There's a little bit more depth which looks really nice and if we was to look at the rocks as well, you know, it looks a little bit better. Um, so one more change that I do want to make here is I want to change the sides, uh, not the size, but the amount of tiling that there is on the textures because it just, it just looks too small and it tiles it way too much. It's just completely unnatural. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. <coughs> And the way I'm going to change that is I'm going to get my landscape coordinates and I'm just going to change the values on just this one little node. And that's all I need to change it on really because I've hooked it up to all of my texture samples here so it's going to do it nice and easily for me. So the thing that I'm going to change here is the pan, UV, uh, the UVs, I'm going to change it to 1 and see what happens there. So it's getting a little bit bigger. I could change it to 2 and it should get a little bit even bigger maybe as soon as we can see what it looks like. There you are. So it is getting bigger, it is getting more realistic. So I'm going to go ahead and press apply on that and just wait for the changes and hopefully now it should look a little bit better. So just give it a minute or so just to you know compile the shade, it shouldn't take too long. Um, but when it is done we should have some pretty awesome results. Okay, just give it a moment. And one other thing that I want to do is I'm going to quickly change the specular value, not to completely zero, so there's no shininess. I'm going to change this to something like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, um, you know, just so it's not completely 
you know, so there's no light at all. So, I mean, if you look at it now, it does look quite nice with that amount of specularity. Um, it does look a little bit more realistic. We've got lots of depth thanks to the normal maps, and hopefully we can really start to see our terrain coming together now. So I'm going to go ahead and close the material editor. That is pretty much I want to, everything I want to do in there for now. If you do want to add other materials, you can do it very, very easily just from there. But for now, I'm just going to close that up and just wait for our new terrain to get in here. And it's looking quite nice. We've got too much specularity once again. So I'm just going to turn that down a little bit more. I'm going to change it to a value of something like 0.1. And let's have a look at that. That's a little bit better, and I'm going to press apply and see how that is going. Alright, so just give that a moment. Also, in the meantime, I'm going to go into my like sculpting mode, I guess, and I'm just going to make a few little changes to this. Uh, I'm not going to make any changes to the sculpting, sorry. I'm going to make some changes to the painting. So basically, the painting that I want to do today is just quickly, you know, put in some paths for the player to follow around so the player knows how to get to the shed, how to walk around the lake, and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to quickly do that, and you can also see our texture is looking a little bit better now. It's still a little bit too small, um, so I'm going to have to make some further adjustments to that. And so I'm going to try one other thing. I'm going to go to my landscape coordinates, I'm just going to change my mapping scale, um, and I'm going to change this to 3. And there we go, it's definitely got bigger this time. Let's try that and see exactly what happens. So give it one more minute just to, you know, compile the shaders again, it should look pretty nice. Normally for me, whenever I just change the UVs, it will make it a lot bigger for me, so, yeah. Anyway, so just give that a second, any second now. There you are, so it's starting to look bigger, it's starting starting to look better, so I'm going to change that one more time, and this time I'm going to change it to a value of, say, instead of 3, let's change that to 6. And that should really blow it up here, and hopefully that should be just right, around the right value for it to be, you know, realistic and detailed, but, you know, not too big at the same time. Just give that a moment, and I do apologize the tutorial is dragging on a little bit, um, you know, of all these material changes, but there is a lot of stuff that you can do with your terrain material to make it really realistic and really nice. So here we are, I think that's pretty much a happy medium for me right now. I do need to turn down the specularity a little bit, but if you have a look at like the rocks here, the gravel, that does look really, really nice. It looks really realistic, we've got lots of depth on there. Um, we've got just about the right kind of lighting and it looks pretty awesome. So I'm just going to quickly draw in those paths for the mud. So I'm going to quickly do that and I'm just going to use the paint tool once again. I'm going to turn my brush size all the way down this time because I don't want the paths to be too big. And if I recall correctly, according to my level plan, my player start was over here. Um, and then we're going to be walking around here through some trees around the lake or over here to the shed and all the way up there. So I'm going to select the mud layer and I'm pretty much just going to be drawing this on in a little area like this. There we are and because I don't want to make it a complete circle I'm just going to draw a bit over here too. I'm also going to turn my tool strength up a little bit because it's painting a bit too slow for my liking. And here we are, we can just start to draw we can just start to draw that stuff in there. And now what I'm going to do is I am just going to draw the paths around here, da, 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 all the way around the lake. The lake. Whoops. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z on that one. I can't see, you know, the outline of the lake too well because, you know, it's a little bit dark. So I'm trying my best here. Um, your mountain probably won't be exactly the same as mine anyway. So you may be able to do it a little bit better than me. Once we've done that, let's just go ahead and chuck them all the way over here towards the mountain, not the mountain, the mansion, or where it should be anyway. And one more little path over to the shed, and that should just about do for now. So I'm going to press play, going to open this up, and let's just quickly follow the path, see if it's okay. So it looks all good to me, so the player can run down this path. Looks really awesome, really nice. We will be making some further changes to the terrain and stuff like that, but for now that is looking good. We are still yet to add all the foliage, you know, the trees, the rocks and all of that. But for now that is pretty much everything I wanted to go over. So thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.